Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfictions. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto had dragon summoning contract and a poison taijutsu. Here is short summary. What if Naruto knows a kenjutsu and taijutsu style that is unique to the dragon summoning clan plus a taijutsu style that relies on poison? Also with a legendary sword with him, the poisonous dragon will shake the world to its core. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Curse that Kakashi, always trying to play favorites. I know that he is training Sasuke because he is related to Kakashi's old teammate Obito but hey I'm the son of his sensei. Naruto ranted to himself in his mind as he walked towards the Hokage Tower. Ah, don't worry about it. You are already strong so why do you need help from Kakashi? Kurama, the Nine Tails Fox replied. Simple, he is the only one other than Jiraiya that knows how to use the Hiraishin properly and since Jiraiya is not here, Kakashi is the only person I can go to. Naruto replied. Once Naruto reached the Hokage Tower, Naruto knocked on the door before entering. Ah Naruto, how can I help you today? Hiraizen Serutobi, the Sandame Hokage asked. I was wondering if there is any training grounds that is large enough for me to practice my kenjutsu and taijutsu. The style I'm using can be quite destructive, Naruto said. I think that training ground 44 will be large enough for you to practice. By the way Naruto, what kenjutsu and taijutsu style are you practicing? The Hokage asked. That would be the Mugen Doragon Buredo Sutaryu for kenjutsu while the taijutsu style is known as the Hokuto no Kobushi Juahasai Doragon. Naruto replied. I have never heard of this styles before. How did you manage to learn them? The Hokage asked. As you know, I started training ever since I was six. One day I found the dragon summoning contract and I signed it. The Kenjutsu and Taijutsu style that I mentioned was given to me by the dragon clan. Naruto replied. I will have to see how powerful they are since they are from the dragon summoning clan. One more thing. I want to warn you that there are many poisonous plants and animals in training ground 44 so I want you to be on the lookout okay? The Hokage asked. Of course Gigi, you know me. Naruto said before leaving the room in a standard shushin. Naruto. Remember the taijutsu style I taught you but never gave you the name of it? Kurama asked in Naruto's mind. Yeah what about it? Naruto asked. It is known as the Dukukan. However its true potential can only be reached when your body can produce poison on its own. Kurama replied. Why are you telling me this now? Naruto asked again. Simple. The Hokage mentioned that there are many poisonous plants and animals in there right? If you can collect and extract the poison from them, I can modify your body to produce that type of poison so that you can use the Dokukensu Tairu properly. Kurama replied. Sure. I will get to it once we reach there. Naruto said. For the next month, Naruto spent that time practicing the Dokukensu Tairu, Juahasai Doragon no Chikara and Mugen Doragon Buredo Sutaryu. Kurama managed to modify Naruto's DNA slightly to allow him to produce poison. This meant that Naruto was immune to poison as well. Naruto managed to come up with the poison Shushin. During that one month, Naruto also did many d rank mission including catching Tora the cat. After Sasuke demanded for a c rank mission, the Hokage tasked Team 7 to escort Tizuna back to Wave Country which was near Kiri. Where the hell is Kakashi Sensei? Sakura screeched out loud. He will be here soon. Naruto replied in a bored tone before taking out a book to read. Is your sensei always late? Tizuna asked Sasuke. Yes he is, usually late for at least 3 hours. Sasuke replied before going back to brooding. After half an hour, Kakashi finally arrived. Yo, let's get going then. Kakashi said before everyone moved out. Naruto was still reading his book but was aware of his surrounding. Sakura decided to talk to Tizuna about Wave while Kakashi and Sasuke were looking at their surroundings. Tizuna san, are there any ninjas in Wave? Sakura asked. Nope. In the past we used to rely on ninjas from Uzu to help us but ever since they were wiped out we could only rely on Kiri which is in a civil war right now. Tizuna replied. Uzu? I have never heard of that place before, Sakura said. They were well known for their fuinjutsu. 
In fact the Shodem Hokage married an Uzumaki, Kakashi replied. Are you referring to Mito Uzumaki? The first Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune? Naruto asked. Indeed Naruto but how did you know that Mito Sama was a Jinchuriki? Kakashi asked suspicious of Naruto. Well, Hokage Gigi told me himself. Naruto replied before going back to his book. After traveling for another half an hour, the group passed a puddle of water. Seriously. This has to be the most pathetic genjutsu ever. It has not rained in more than three days so there should not be any puddle water at all. Naruto thought to himself. Suddenly two kanais came out of the puddle and stabbed Kakashi in the head. Kakashi sensei. Sakura shouted shocked that her sensei died. Sasuke on the other hand tried to take control of the situation but was easily overpowered by the two ninjas. Naruto decided to show some of his skills by taking a kanai and infusing it with wind chakra before throwing it at one of the ninja's throat killing him instantly. The other ninja tried to kick Naruto but Naruto managed to catch his opponent's feet before pushing the foot upwards. The ninja tried to do a back flip but halfway through, Naruto kicked him in the stomach sending him to the ground face first. Naruto then took out another kanai and pressed it on the ninja's throat. Suddenly, Kakashi appeared in front of them. Kakashi sensei, you are not dead, Sakura exclaimed. Do you really think so lowly of me? Kakashi asked but Naruto ignored him. Why the hell would be the demon brothers be here? Answer me right now or you will end up like your brother Gozu, Naruto demanded. I will never tell you anything might as well kill me right now, Maizu shouted. Your wish is my command, Naruto whispered before slicing Maizu's throat. Tizuna. Tell me why two missing nins are after you, Kakashi said. Tazuna had no choice but tell Team 7 that Gato has been controlling Wave and he wants to build a bridge to link Wave with other countries. He lied about the mission rank because he did not have enough money to pay for a B-rank mission. What do you guys want to do now? Kakashi asked. I want to test my strength against others so I want to carry on with the mission, Sasuke said. Since Sasuke-kun is going, then I'm going as well. Sakura screeched causing all the males present to cover their ears. I'm not the type that would allow others to suffer to this type of fate so I don't mind carrying on with the mission. Thank you very much, Wave will forever be in your debt. Tazuna exclaimed before they carried on with the journey. It took them three days traveling a civilian pace to make it to the bridge that Tazuna and the people of Wave were building. Wow, that is such a huge bridge, Naruto said with his eyes wide open. Yeah. Another few more weeks would be needed to complete this bridge, Tazuna said before spotting one of his friends there. Sanji, thanks for helping me, Tazuna said. That's what friends are for right, Sanji replied as Tazuna and Team 7 got on the boat. Once they got on, Sanji started to row the boat. Excuse me Sanji-san but why row when you have a motor? Sakura asked. The motor is too loud and it would attract Gato's men, Sanji replied. Sakura nodded her head and continued to stare out to the sea. Once they got on to the other side of the river, the mist started to become heavier. Tazuna, is the mist here always that thick? Naruto asked. Occasionally, yes but during this time of the year no, Tazuna replied. If that was the case, that means that at least one Kiri Nin who knows how to use the Kirigakir no Jutsu, for With the presence of the Demon Brothers, I'm pretty sure that we are going to face Zabuza Momochi. A former member of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Shichinen Shu, 5. This mission is getting more and more interesting by the minute. Naruto thought to himself and they moved inwards. They stopped when Sasuke decided to throw a kanai into the bushes when he heard something moving in there. When Sasuke went to retrieve the kanai, he found out that it was only a white rabbit. During this time of the year, the rabbit's fur should be brown unless it was raised indoors. Kakashi thought to himself before widening his eyes. Everyone get down now, Kakashi shouted while tackling Tazuna onto the floor. Sakura and Sasuke followed but Naruto jumped over the incoming blade. Seeing that it was the Kabikirabocho, Naruto confirmed his theory. Never thought that I would see a former member of the legendary Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Shichinen Shu this early in my Shinobi career, Naruto stated. Oh, so you know who I am then? A figure said from the treetops. Once the mist disappeared, Zabuza was seen. Of course, 
I have always wanted to see the Kabikirabocho in person so you can say that this a dream come true Zabuza Momochi. Naruto replied. No wonder the Demon Brothers lost. They had to face Sharingan no Kakashi. The man that said to have copied over a thousand jutsus, Zabuza stated. Actually, it was not me who killed the Demon Brothers but the blonde over here, Naruto Uzumaki. Kakashi replied. Huh, and Uzumaki eh? Brat, are you good with Kenjutsu? Zabuza asked. Yeah I am. How about we have a Kenjutsu only fight? Naruto asked. Naruto, are you crazy? He is an A-rank missing nin, there is no way you can defeat him, Kakashi exclaimed. Kakashi, you worry too much. I have been secretly training all this time so I'm more powerful than you think. Naruto replied. He then unsealed his sword. Holy crap is that the legendary Doragon Sukeiru no Ken, 6, Zabuza exclaimed. Yeah. I intend to bring its fame even higher than it is right now. Naruto said before getting into the basic stance of the Mugen Doragon Buredo Sutaryu. Oh shit. Hopefully it's not what I think it is. Zabuza thought to himself before going into his stance. Without any warning, Naruto rushed forward and did a vertical slash trying to catch Zabuza off guard but it did not work. Zabuza blocked the strike and pushed Naruto back. This went on for several minutes as Naruto tried to slash at Zabuza. Looks like I have to use it. Naruto thought to himself as he channeled Wind Chakra into the sword. Infinite Dragon Blade First Strike. Roar of the Dragon. Naruto shouted as he brought his sword down sending a wind blade at Zabuza. Zabuza tried to block it but he was too slow. The attack ended up cutting his chest. Brat. I admit that you are good but you still have a long way to go before you can beat me. Zabuza shouted before bringing down the Kabikirabocho with great force but Naruto managed to dodge it. Infinite Dragon Blade Fourth Strike. Slash of the Dragon. Naruto shouted after gathering spiritual energy onto the sword and molding it into a dragon before releasing it at fast speed. Zabuza knew that he could not block it so he decided to dodge which was a good thing because when the attack came in contact with the tree, it literally exploded. Once the smoke was cleared, the ground around the tree was in ruins as well. What the hell is that attack? Thank god I decided to dodge otherwise I would have been dead. Zabuza thought to himself. Infinite Dragon Blade Fifth Strike. Dragon Scale. Naruto whispered as he activated the seal on the sword. The blade of the sword was then covered in dragon scales. Zabuza. After this attack you will be finished. Naruto shouted before running towards Zabuza at fast speed and slashing his sword. Zabuza tried to block it again but to his shock, it made a crack in the Kabikirabocho. My Kabikirabocho is said to be the toughest sword out there yet it was damaged by a single attack. How can that be? Zabuza thought to himself. As Zabuza was being distracted, a couple of Senbons hit him right in the neck killing him. Thank you for distracting Zabuza so that I can kill him easily. A man wearing a mask said after he appeared in front of Zabuza's body. No problem Hunter Nin. I hope that with this cooperation, we can form a future alliance between Konoha and Kiri in the near future. Naruto replied. I will report this to the Mizukage and let him decide about that. The Hunter Nin said before shushing away with the body of Zabuza. When Naruto turned around, he noticed that Kakashi was looking at him with a shocked expression while Sasuke had a look of jealousy. What are you guys looking at? Let's move. Naruto shouted snapping Kakashi out of his daze. Right. Tazuna can you lead us to your house? Kakashi asked. Of course, it will only take 10 minutes from here to reach my house. Tazuna said before they started to walk. After 10 minutes, they came into a clearing with a house in the center. Tsunami, I'm home. Tazuna shouted before a frying pan hit him right in the head. Tusan. Do you know how worried I was when you did not return at the time you said you would? Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter shouted. Sorry but something came up along the way. I hired this ninjas to help us. The cyclops is Kakashi while the blonde guy is Naruto. The emo guy is Sasuke and the pink haired girl is Sakura. Tazuna replied. Thank you for protecting my father. Tsunami said with a bow. No problem. That's what we do anyways. However I have some bad news to tell you guys. Naruto said. What is it? Tazuna asked. Zabuza is still alive. The Senbon is not a weapon that a hunter nin would use and he should have destroyed the body of Zabuza right there and then. Naruto replied. 
Looks like the hunter Nin is working with Zabuza Van. Tomorrow morning we will start your training, Kakashi said. How would training in such a short time help us against someone like Zabuza? Sakura asked. Oh, you and Sasuke will be taking on the hunter Nin while me and Naruto will fight Zabuza. Kakashi replied before going back to reading his Icha Icha Paradise. That night, Naruto was sitting outside of the house having a mental conversation with Kurama. I can't wait to field test the Dokukensutairu, Naruto said mentally. If we can find some of Gado's henchmen near here then we got the test subjects, Kurama replied. Well, seems like I will be using some shadow clones to help me find Gado's henchmen then, Naruto said before forming the familiar sign and ten clones popped out. I want you all of you to go out and scout the area for Gado's henchmen once you found them, dispel. Got that? Naruto asked and his clones nodded their heads before disappearing. Naruto then got back into the house to get some sleep. The next day, Naruto was woken up by one of his clones dispelling and gaining the knowledge. He quickly changed and went down for breakfast. Kakashi Sensei, last night I sent clones to scout for Gado's men and I found one of their location. Permission for me to go and eradicate them? Naruto asked. Fine but make sure you come back alive or the Hokage is going to be pissed at me. Kakashi replied. Naruto nodded before he used the standard Shushin to reach the base. When he got there Naruto quickly placed an exploding seal on the door and activated it. Instantly the door shattered and some of the splinters managed to kill some of the bandits that Gato hired. Who the hell is there? One bandit shouted. His response was to get punched in the heart with a fist covered in poison. The poison made the bandit die a slow but painful death since the poison Naruto used caused that to happen. Naruto then took out his sword started killing bandits left and right. After a while Naruto gathered spiritual energy on the blade and formed it into a huge dragon. While unleashing the dragon, Naruto shouted, Infinite Dragon Blade Sixth Strike! Slash of the exploding dragon! Once the spiritual dragon was released, it started to expand before exploding send small dragons in different directions killing most of the bandits present. The survivors were quickly taken care of by Naruto using the first strike. Looks like our job is done here. Naruto thought to himself before leaving the base. He managed to make it back in time for training with his team. Now that Naruto is here, I will be teaching you how to climb trees, Kakashi said. But sensei we already know how to climb trees, Sakura said. I think what Kakashi sensei meant was this. Naruto said before sending chakra to his feet and walking up the tree like he was walking on the ground. How do you know it? Kakashi asked. Considering how slow you were at teaching me, I had to ask for help from other people. Naruto replied. Hey, I taught you a lot of things. Kakashi said offended that Naruto was suggesting that he did not teach anything to him. Like what? Ever since you became our sensei, you have been training Sasuke in private while I had nothing to do. Thank your lucky stars that I'm good enough to survive for a while otherwise I would have complained to the Hokage the first chance I got. I'm pretty sure you have already taught Sasuke about tree climbing right? Naruto asked. When Kakashi did not reply, Naruto knew he was right. This team is hopeless, I will be doing my own training and don't you dare follow me. Naruto said before walking towards the lake. Once he was there he started to meditate. Naruto was sure that the only place he can train freely would be inside his mindscape. What's up Naruto? Kurama asked. Nothing much other than how to add an element into the Rasengan and completing my father's jutsu. Naruto replied. After thinking for a while, Naruto channeled some wind chakra into the Rasengan with interesting results. The chakra started to form blades around the Rasengan, which is starting to look like a shuriken, but before it could be fully formed, it exploded in Naruto's face. Thank God I tried this out in my mindscape otherwise I would have died, Naruto said. Yeah, thank God for that. It also means that I would not have to heal you as much, Kurama replied. For the next few hours, Naruto kept on practicing on adding wind chakra into the Rasengan, which he managed to do it. Kurama, I was thinking about calling this the Rasenshuriken. Do you think it is a good name? Naruto asked. Hell yeah, that is one badass name. Can't wait to see the destruction that the jutsu would cause. Kurama replied before Naruto left his mindscape and walked back to Tazuna's house just in time for lunch. How was your training, Naruto? 
Kakashi asked curious about what did Naruto accomplish my meditating. It was very fruitful, I managed to control my chakra and forming it into different objects such as a kanai or shuriken. Naruto replied lying to Kakashi. Seems like you have one of the Uzumaki's bloodline then. It allows the its users to form solid objects with just pure chakra. The bloodline is known as the Shiroi Chakra, 6, Kakashi said knowing that Sakura and Sasuke would want to know. Yes, this is extremely useful when I'm low on shurikens or I have no time to unseal my sword, Naruto explained. Why bother with training? You are all going to be killed by Gato anyways, Inari, Tazuna's grandson said. Hey, we are shinobis and they do not die that easily, Naruto replied. Whatever. You will know I'm right when you are about to get killed," Inari said before going up to his room. Sorry about that but ever since Kaiza died, Inari was never the same," Tsunami said. Who was Kaiza? Sakura decided to ask. Kaiza was my husband and father of Inari. He tried to stand up to Gato but in the process he got captured and was publicly executed. Tsunami replied with some tears falling from her eyes. Don't worry Tsunami-san. I will make sure that Gato would suffer a lot before sending that bastard to hell," Naruto said before getting up and going to sleep. Now that all of you can do the tree walking exercise, we can move on to the water walking one. It is very similar to the tree walking exercise but this time it will take a lot more control as the waves would cause it to be uneven," Kakashi stated. Naruto rolled his eyes before sending Chakra to his feet and started to walk on the water. Jeez Kakashi, we were supposed to know this before we took a mission higher than AD ranked 1," Naruto stated. Hee hee, I forgot about that," Kakashi replied looking sheepish. I really have to tell Hokage Gigi about this. Kakashi's lack of teaching for me and Sakura is making Team 7 fail," Naruto thought to himself as he walked back to land. Since I'm able to do it already, I will be training somewhere else," Naruto said before he shushined away. He got to the place where there was a small clearing before entering his mindscape. What can I do for you today, Naruto? Kurama asked. I would like to know if I have more than one chakra affinity. Can you help me check? Naruto asked. Kurama nodded its head before closing his eyes and focusing on Naruto's chakra pathway. After a while, Kurama opened his eyes. Naruto, you have all five of the basic elements and you can use it to merge into sub elements such as wood and ice. Kurama replied. Sweet, now I have to master water manipulation to the level of the Naidame Hokage, Naruto said. Why start with water? Kurama asked curious. I want to create an ice version of the Rasengan. Just imagine the destruction that it would cause, Naruto replied. Yeah. The exercise for water manipulation is to soak a leaf with water. Try to channel chakra with water affinity into the leaf. Kurama said before kicking Naruto out of his own mindscape. Naruto then created 1,000 clones and told them to get a leaf each and try to soak it. With that many clones, it took Naruto two days to master water manipulation. Once he got water manipulation down, Naruto tried adding water to the Rasengan but nothing seemed to happen until the Rasengan exploded and jets of water hit Naruto causing him to bruise. That was unexpected. I'm pretty sure that it will hurt a lot more when I finish it. Maybe the jet of water might be able to kill my opponents. Naruto thought to himself as he walked back towards Tazuna's house deciding that he was too tired to continue. That night, while having dinner, Inari decided to voice his displeasure. Why bother training? You are all going to die anyway, Inari said. Kid, we are shinobis we don't die that easily, Naruto replied. Everyone who went against Gato ended up dead so how will you be no different? Inari asked not believing Naruto's words one bit. Those who went against Gato were they shinobis? Naruto asked. No, but what is the point? Inari questioned. Simple, we are trained to kill. Kakashi might not look like much but he is very strong. Being so close to Kiri you guys should know about the seven swordsmen of the mist right? Naruto asked. Inari nodded his head. I fought against Zabuza and survived. Since Gato is weaker than Zabuza, it will be easy for me to kill Gato," Naruto stated. Are shinobis that powerful? Tsunami asked. Yes they are. Let's take the Hokages for example. The Shodem Hokage was able to use the wood release that created the forest near Konoha. The Naidame Hokage was feared because he was able to draw water from the atmosphere, 
which was very hard for even Kiri ninjas. The Sandame Hokage is known as the Shinobi no Kami while Iwa feared the Yandaimi Hokage because of two techniques. The Rasengan and Hiraishin. I'm pretty sure that if the Yandaimi, Shodem and Nidame were alive they could take out Gato without even breaking a sweat. Kakashi stated. Wow. Never thought that Shinobis are that strong. Tsunami stated. Kakashi. I have some information that might interest you. One of my clones just dispelled and I received the knowledge that Zabuza will attack the bridge tomorrow. What should we do? Naruto asked. Simple, we will sleep early tonight so that we are prepared for tomorrow. Kakashi stated before leaving the room followed by Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura. The next day, Team 7 woke up early to get ready. Tazuna. One of my clones will take Inari and Tsunami to a safe place just in case Gato decides to send some of his thugs to take hostage. Naruto said. That's a good idea, thanks Naruto. Tazuna replied before Naruto created a single clone and gave him the orders. When they got to the bridge, they saw many workers lying on the ground. Looks like Zabuza is here, I have to focus right now. Naruto thought to himself. So you guys finally show up, Zabuza stated. Beside Zabuza was a man holding the rage and no ken. Looks like Gato hired Aoi Rokusho to do his dirty work as well, huh? Naruto can you handle Aoi while I take on Zabuza? Kakashi asked. All Naruto did was to nod his head and unsealing the Doragon Sukeiru no Ken before rushing towards Aoi. Meanwhile Sasuke came face to face with the fake hunter Nin that turns out to be a member of the Yuki clan who are known for their ability to use the Hyaten. Aoi brought his sword down in a vertical slash but Naruto managed to dodge it. This went on for several minutes and getting pissed by the second. Stop dodging my strikes. Aoi shouted angrily. Hell no. Naruto replied dodging another strike from Aoi. After gaining some distance away from Aoi, Naruto started to channel wind chakra into his blade and shaping into a dragon head. Infinite dragon blade second strike. Fang of the dragon. Naruto shouted before releasing the dragon's head. The dragon's head connected with Aoi's left hand slicing it off from his body. Aoi started to shout in pain. Naruto used this to his advantage by coating his blade with wind chakra again. Infinite Dragon Blade First Strike. Roar of the Dragon. Naruto shouted doing a horizontal slash slicing Aoi's head off. Naruto then went to collect the Rage and No Ken and put it in one of his storage seals. At the same time, Naruto heard something similar to birds chirping and he knew that Kakashi's fight against Zabuza was about to be over. However, clapping was soon heard. Looks like the demon of the mist is overrated huh? Can't even take care of a few brats, Gato stated. Gato, what the hell are you doing here? Zabuza demanded. You see, it's too expensive for me to pay you so I decided to kill you as well, Gato stated before laughing. Wait, that short and fat guy is Gato? I expected him to be at least quite tall, Naruto stated pissing Gato off. Whoever kills the blonde haired brat will get double pay. Gato shouted before his thugs moved forward. Hey Zabuza, since we are no longer enemies, want to have a competition? Naruto asked. Sure. The person that kills the most thugs wins. Zabuza stated before running towards the thugs and started hacking them apart. Naruto created a few clones and they all went to slice the heads off the thugs. All in all, it was considered a massacre, as there was no way in hell that the thugs stood any chance. By the time both Naruto and Zabuza were done, the bridge was covered with dead bodies and blood. Please don't kill me. I will give you anything, money, women just name it. Gato exclaimed as Naruto walked towards him. The only thing I want is your life. Naruto roared before cutting Gato's head off his body. When Naruto turned around, the villagers of Wave was standing there staring for a while before starting to cheer and celebrate that Gato is finally dead. It took Tazuna and his men two more weeks to completely finish the bridge. During this time Naruto had a sudden growth spurt but he hid it under a genjutsu so as not to arouse suspicion from his teammates. He also got lessons on using Hayaten from the fake hunter Nin whose name is Haku. After a week of resting, Zabuza and Haku decided to leave and go back to Kiri as they heard that the civil war there was over and the rebels won. Time skip. Day of departure, promise you will visit again alright? Inari said to Naruto and the rest of Team 7. Of course we will. Naruto exclaimed before walking away with his team. You know, 
We still have not named this bridge yet, one random villager stated. How about we call it the Mega Tazuna Bridge? Tazuna suggested before being bonked on the head by tsunami causing people to laugh a little. Why don't we call it the Great Naruto Bridge after our hero? Inari suggested. When that was met with agreement, Tazuna declared loudly that from that point on the bridge would be known as the Great Naruto Bridge. It took Kakashi and Team 7 four days to go back to Konoha, as they no longer had any civilians with them. Ah, Kakashi how was the mission? Azumo, one of the Eternal Chunin Guard asked. It was fine and we learned a lot about each other during that time. Kakashi stated before walking trough the gates. On the way to the Hokage Tower, Team 7 came across Team 8. I'm surprised that you are still a ninja dobi. You should have quit while you could. Kiba said arrogantly. Whatever dog breath. I have better things to do than listen to you insult me. Naruto said brushing Kiba away. It so happens that both teams were heading to the Hokage Tower. Once they were there, Kurenai, Team 8's a sensei decided to speak. Team 8 returning from another successful D-ranked mission, Hokage-sama, Kurenai stated. Good, the pay would be given to them soon. Now what about you Kakashi? The Hokage asked. Team 7 returning from a successful C-rank turned a rank mission due to some complications. Kakashi stated shocking the everyone present. What complications were there? The Hokage asked. Air, we came face to face with Zabuza Momochi. Kakashi stated afraid of the Hokage's reaction. What? You better tell me the whole thing after I dismiss Team 8. The Hokage said. Hokage Gigi, I have something that you might like. Naruto said before unsealing the head of Aoi and the Rage and No Ken. Naruto, you managed to kill Aoi Rokusho and B rank missing Nin and able to retrieve the Rage and No Ken. That is amazing. Since you were the one that killed Aoi, I will allow you to use the Rage and No Ken from now on. The Hokage stated shocked at the fact that Naruto was that strong. Once Team 8 left, Kakashi told the Hokage everything. By the end of it, the Hokage was feeling angry towards Kakashi for not asking for backup while happy that Naruto progressed so well. Now that the report is done, get out of my office. I still have lots of paperwork to do, the Hokage stated. Hokage Gigi, why don't you just use the cage Bushin to do the work for you? Naruto asked causing the Hokage to bang his head on the table repeatedly. Knowing that this could go on for a while, Naruto decided to leave. The very next day, Kakashi called them for a team meeting. The Chunin exams are coming soon so I want all of you to be well prepared. Sakura I have arranged someone to teach you medical jutsu while I will be training Sasuke as he recently activated his Sharingan. Naruto, I did not have time to arrange anything for you yet so you will have to find someone yourself. Kakashi stated. Naruto did not say anything but he just shushined away using the standard shushin. Once he arrived at training ground 44, he noticed a group of five women there. I heard that Team 7 recently returned from a C rank turned a rank mission is it true? Coming from my brother I find it hard to believe. A woman with markings similar to Kiba said. Yes it is true. What is even more surprising thing is that Naruto managed to kill Aoi and retrieve the Rage and No Ken. Since the Hokage allowed him to use the Rage and No Ken, I believe that Naruto is a Kenjutsu user as well. You can test him if you want Yugo. Kuranai asked. Yeah, I really have to find him and ask for a spar sometime soon. I think that someone is spying on us. What should we do? Yugo asked. Anko, I want to use your snakes to bind the spy after I put him in a genjutsu. Kuranai said and Anko nodded her head. Before the plan could be carried out, Naruto walked out into the open. Naruto, what are you doing here? Kuranai asked shocked that it would be Naruto of all people. I came here to train of course, Naruto replied. You do know that you are not allowed to enter there right? Anko asked. Yes but the Hokage granted me permission to enter and use it for my own training. In fact, I have been coming here to train for quite some time already. Naruto replied. If the Hokage allowed you to be here, you must be pretty skilled right? The woman with the red mark on her face asked. I would not say that I'm very skilled but just very lucky. By the way are you in any way related to Kiba? Naruto asked. Yes, he is my brother. My name is Hana, Hana said. It's nice to meet you. Naruto replied. What are you planning on training anyways? Hana asked. 
A jutsu that I recently completed. Do you want to see it? Naruto asked and received five nods. Naruto quickly formed the Rasengan before adding wind chakra into it causing the Rasengan morph into the Rasenshuriken. Futon. Rasenshuriken. Naruto shouted before throwing it. The damage was huge. Trees within the Rasenshuriken's radius were destroyed and a crater was formed on the ground. What the hell was that jutsu? Anko asked. You have heard of the Rasengan right? Naruto asked. When he received nods from the five ladies, Naruto continued. The Rasengan was not a complete jutsu because the Yandaimi wanted to add his chakra affinity into the Rasengan and create an elemental version of it but due to the Kyubi's attack, he did not get the chance, Naruto said. How did you know the Rasengan in the first place? Kurinai asked curious. Aero Senen taught it to me of course, Naruto stated. Aero Senen? You mean Jiraiya right? Yugao asked. Yeah. I call him that because he is a pervert and writes the books that Kakashi loves to read. Naruto replied. Speaking of Kakashi, why are you here alone training? Hana asked. He is training Sasuke in using the Sharingan while he managed Sakura to learn some medical jutsus but did not arrange anything for me which is fine because I already have something to do other than field testing that jutsu. Naruto replied. And what would be that something else you will be doing? Hana asked curious. Fuenjutsu and Juenjutsu of course. I'm already a level 18 seal practitioner and a level 20 cursed seal practitioner according to the Uzumaki's standard. Naruto said which shocked all the ladies present because they knew that Uzumaki's were famed for their Fuenjutsu. I have always been interested in Fuenjutsu but not a lot of people here knows it so can you teach me? Kurinai asked. Sure. Is anyone else interested? Naruto asked. Count me in. Hana said while Anko and Yugo agreed as well. Oh, Anko can you let me see your cursed seal, I might be able to remove it for you. Naruto asked. Not even Jiraiya could remove it. What makes you think you can? Anko asked aggressively. Well Jiraiya is only well versed in Fuenjutsu but not Juenjutsu. Naruto replied. After hearing that Anko showed Naruto the seal. After studying it for a moment. Naruto knew how the seal works but it would take some time for him to come up with a solution. For the next few weeks until the Chunin exams, Naruto would meet Kurinai, Anko, Hana and Yugo at training ground 44 every Tuesday and Friday to teach them Fuenjutsu. Within this few weeks, Naruto and the ladies became friends as well. Sometimes he would hang out with them at the Dango bar near the training ground. Time skip. Two days before the Chunin exams, Naruto had just finished the counterseal for Anko's cursed seal and went to get some ramen when he noticed that he was being followed. When Naruto turned around, he saw a cupboard. Konohamaru, how many times must I tell you that rocks are not squares? Naruto asked. Caught by you again Naruto Nisan, Konohamaru said dejectedly. Konohamaru, learn from your mistakes and never make the same mistakes in future. Now introduce me to your friends, Naruto stated. The girl is Moegi and the other guy is Udon, Konohamaru stated. Are you really strong? Udon asked. I guess you can say that, Naruto replied. From what I heard from Konohamaru, you are very fast. How do you go about training your speed? Moegi asked. Well, I used to play pranks on others so Janins and Anbu were sent to catch me. By dodging them, I was training my speed and ability to lose those who are chasing me. Tell you what. I want you guys to start playing pranks around the village and try not to get caught. Is that all right? Naruto asked. Hi. Konohamaru, Moegi and Udon said at the same time before running but Konohamaru accidentally knocked into someone. Brat. Watch where you are going. Since you bumped into me I will teach you a lesson. A boy wearing a cat suit said. Konkuro, don't what if he is here? A girl with a huge battle fan asked. Tamari. He is not here so relax a little, Konkuro said. Dude, why the hell are you wearing makeup? Naruto asked. It's war paint, not makeup. Why does everyone think that way? Konkuro asked while shouting. That does not matter right now. Release Konohamaru right now before I deal with you on the behalf of the Sandame Hokage, the grandfather of Konohamaru. Naruto stated coldly. Hearing this, Konkuro quickly dropped the Konohamaru and Konohamaru quickly ran away. Suddenly sand was seen and when the sand cleared, 
stood a boy with red hair and the character for love on his forehead. Conqueror, you are a disgrace to Suna. Blonde kid what is your name and why is mother telling me to stay away from you? The boy asked making Konkuro and Tamari pale. My name is Uzumaki Naruto and I have no idea who your mom is or why she is telling you to stay away from me, Naruto replied. My name is Gara and I can't wait to test my existence against you, Gara said before leaving in a sand shushin. Naruto, the boy just now contains the Ichibi. And I also feel the presence of the Nibi and Nanabi as well, Kurama said. Looks like I have to warn Hokage Gigi then. Naruto thought to himself before using a standard shushin to reach the Hokage Tower. Hokage Gigi, I have something important to tell you, Naruto said. Oh and what is that? The Hokage asked. The Jinchurikis of the Ichibi, Nibi and Nanabi are here, Naruto replied. I already know about the Jinchuriki of the Nibi and Nanabi being here as their respective cages have already informed me. However, it seems that the case cage forgot to inform me that the Jinchuriki of the Ichibi taking part in the Chunin exams. Thanks for telling me Naruto. Now go get ready for tomorrow and don't be late. The first part of the Chunin exam will be at the academy and it starts at 10 am, the Hokage said before dismissing Naruto. Where the hell is Naruto? He was supposed to be here at least half an hour ago. I hope that he would not pick up the habit of Kakashi. Anko stated annoyed that she had to wait. I'm sure that he has a reason to be late. Kuranai replied. Suddenly a bunch of leaves gathered together. Once it was cleared, Naruto was seen. Sorry ladies, I was taken to the Hokage just now about something so I was late, Naruto said. Oh well, at least your excuse seems legit unlike Kakashi's. Yugo stated causing everyone present to laugh. Once they finished laughing, Naruto unsealed some of his equipment. How has all your Fuenjutsu training been going? Naruto asked. I managed to create a storage seal without referring to one that has already been made. Kuranai said. Naruto nodded before motioning Anko to continue. I tried making a storage seal and even referred to an existing one but it still does not seem to work. Anko said before handing Naruto her seal to let him examine. After studying the seal for less than one minute, Naruto knew what was the problem was. Anko, the reason why it does not work is because the strokes are not correct. The lines are supposed to be straight but yours are a bit to the side, Naruto said. Wow, I did not know that something as small as that could affect a seal that much, Anko replied. That is one of the reasons why Fuenjutsu is very obscure. People do not have the patience to learn Fuenjutsu so they do not achieve any results thus giving up. Now Yugo let me examine your storage seal. Naruto said before Yugo handed hers to Naruto. After examining it for a while, Naruto found no mistakes on it. Yugo, this storage seal is very well done almost at the standard of mine. Keep up the good work. Naruto said causing Yugo to gleam in pride, as she knew that Naruto's standard of seal are very high. Naruto, I believe that I have the same problem as Anko. I will pay more attention to it in future. Hana said and Naruto nodded his head. Since tomorrow is the start of the Chunin exams, I would not have the time to teach you anymore so I want all of you to continue with the storage seal until you can do it in a few seconds without making any mistakes. Anko and Hana, make sure that you pay attention to your stroke. See you guys later. Naruto said before he shushined back to his house to get ready for the next day. The next day, Naruto decided to show his true self and released the genjutsu he had on himself and wore a black shirt and black pants. Instead of wearing sandals, Naruto wore combat boots and he also had a trench coat made of leather. Something like former WWE superstar Edge. Naruto's hair also became longer. He then sprinted all the way to the academy to meet his teammates. When he reached there, Sasuke and Sakura were already there. Who the hell are you? Sakura screeched seeing a person she was not familiar with. I'm hurt. I have been your teammate for a few months already and yet you still do not recognize me? Naruto asked. Naruto. Sakura shouted shocked that her blonde teammate changed so much. Yes it's me, now let's go otherwise we will be late for the Chunin exams. Naruto said before walking in with Sakura and Sasuke following behind. After walking up a flight of stairs, they noticed that there was a group of people crowding outside a room with a sign of 301. Those people must suck if they can't even tell that the sign is under a genjutsu. 
Besides, we have only walked up one flight of stairs. Naruto thought to himself before Sasuke decided to speak. It's obvious that there is a genjutsu there. Even Sakura saw through it right? Sasuke said. Of course it was only a simple genjutsu, Sakura stated. Good to know that you can see through a genjutsu but can you block this? A random chunin said before dashing towards Sasuke trying to punch him but someone blocked him. However, a green spandex wearing guy with a bowl cut and huge eyebrows managed to stop the punch. That kid looks a lot like Might Guy. I hope that he does not have the same habits as him as well. Naruto thought to himself. Lee, whose plan was it to hide our strength? A boy with long hair and pale eyes asked. Sorry Neji but something not youthful was about to happen so I had to stop it. Lee exclaimed. Oh god. One might guy is more than enough to drive Konoha insane but now there are two, Naruto exclaimed in his mind while Kurama was laughing. This is one of those days where I think that being sealed up is way better than being freed, Kurama thought to itself. Sasuke and Sakura, we better go before we are late for the exams, Naruto said before walking up another flight of stairs. Before they could enter the room, Lee stopped them. Are you Sakura? Lee asked the pink-haired girl. Sakura nodded her head. Will you go on a date with me? Lee asked. Sakura felt like she was going to puke. That boy in front of you has worse fashion sense than Naruto, who is always wearing orange. Wait a minute, Naruto is not wearing orange today, inner Sakura shouted. Really? How did I not notice that at all? Sakura asked. Maybe it's because you are paying too much attention to Sasuke kun, inner Sakura replied. Seeing that Lee was still waiting for an answer, Sakura told Lee no in her high annoying screeching voice. Lee, don't worry about her. Sakura only likes Sasuke. Anyways, I have to ask you something. Are you related to Might Guy in any way? Naruto asked. Yes, he is my team's sensei. Lee shouted. Lee, you do know that shouting indoors is not youthful right? Naruto asked. This caused Lee to decrease his voice. We have been trying to get Lee to stop shouting ever since he Team 9 was formed. By the way, my name is Tenten. What's yours? Tenten asked. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Lee is it safe to assume that you use the same fighting style as Guy? Naruto asked. Indeed I am but why do you want to know? Lee asked. Oh, I can't wait to face you then since I want to test out my taijutsu against other people. Naruto replied. The flames of youth burns brightly within you Naruto. I hope that I can face you as well. Good luck in the exams, Lee exclaimed. You know Lee, it is very unyouthful to scream indoors especially when the person is right next to you, Naruto stated. Sorry, I will tone it down in future, Lee said without shouting. That was all it took to quite Lee down. Why did I not think of it? Tenten thought to herself. Anyway it's time to go unless you want to be late of course. Naruto said before walking to the room. When team 7 got there, Kakashi was standing in the front door. Good to see that all of you made it, Kakashi said. Kakashi sensei, why are you here? Sakura asked. Well, I came here to wish all of you luck. Now go in before you are late, Kakashi said before he shushined to the Jonin lounge. When team 7 walked into the room, they were hit with killer intent. This made Sasuke and Sakura to shake but it did not affect Naruto at all. Naruto, show those wannabe ninjas what real killer intent is, Kurama said. Okay, let's do this. Naruto replied in his mind before he and Kurama released their killer intents causing all the ninjas in the room to either shake in fear, vomit or pass out. The only one who did not other than Naruto was Gara. After a while Naruto decided to stop the flow of his killer intent. Looks like all the rookie teams are here. Wait, where the hell is Naruto and what was that feeling just now? Kiba shouted. Air, Kiba, Naruto is the blonde guy leaning on the wall behind and I can't describe that feeling either because I have no idea what is it. Why not ask Naruto since he was the one that caused it? Sakura said. When Kiba turned around, he was shocked by the change of Naruto. Dead last, what was that about? Kiba demanded to know. That dog breathe is known as killer intent. Since you are so weak, you will not be able to release that much anyways, Naruto stated. Well if you can do it, I can do it better. 
Kiba said before trying but nothing happened. Just then a guy wearing glasses with white hair came over to them. You guys might want to keep your voices down a little. You might attract teams that are more powerful than you, the guy said. Who the hell are you? Kiba asked. My name is Kabuto Yukushi. A word of advice be very careful with what to do during the exams. One's false move and you can be out of the exam early, Kabuto said. How many times have you taken the Chunin exams then? Sakura asked. Well, this is going to be my seventh time, Kabuto replied. Wow, you must suck then, Kiba exclaimed. Or it might be the test is very hard, Shikamaru stated. Well, since this is your first time taking the Chunin exams let me help you guys out a bit. This is known as the info card. It has information on all the competitors in this exams. Kabuto stated as he took out a stack of cards. I want information on Naruto Uzumaki. Kiba said trying to find out about Naruto as possible. Hum, they're found it. What the hell? Kabuto shouted with his eyes wide. What does it say? Kiba demanded. Naruto Uzumaki, completed 15D ranked, AC ranked turned a ranked mission, AB ranked mission and AS ranked mission. How the hell is he still a genin? Kabuto questioned. This made everyone present to be in shock. When did the Dobi complete AB ranked and S ranked mission? Sasuke thought to himself. Well, I did not expect the Hokage to put that down as AS rank mission. All I told him was to use the cage Bushin to do the paperwork for him. Naruto said. This caused everyone even Sasuke to sweat drop. I have to tell the Rakage about how to defeat paperwork so that he will no longer punch a hole in the wall. Akumo Genin thought to herself. Before Sasuke could ask for information, a cloud of smoke appeared. When it cleared, Ibiki was seen. Settle down little kids, it's time for the first part of the Chunin exams to start. Go find a seat and it can't be next to your teammates, Ibiki said. Once the Genins found their seats, Ibiki continued. Now, my name is Ibiki. The rules of the first part of this exam would be that each of you would have five chances. Each time you are caught cheating, it will cost you one chance. If you use up all the chances, you will be kicked out of the exams with your teammates. If there is nothing else, begin. Ibiki shouted before everyone turned over their paper. Line break. At the Janin lounge, the Janins are discussing about the first part of the exams. What on earth is the Hokage thinking letting Ibiki become the examiner for the first part of the exams? Asuma asked. Who is Ibiki? Kuranai asked. Ibiki is the head of the T&I department and his specialty is mental torture while I specializes in physical torture, Anko replied. Oh. I hope that all the rookie teams will be fine then, Kuranai said before taking another sip of her sake. Oh well, I got to go. Have to prepare for tomorrow's second round, Anko said before she shushined away. Oh shit, I know where the second part of the exams will be, Asuma stated. Where would that be? One Kumo Janin asked overhearing the conversation. Training ground 44 otherwise known as the Forest of Death. Asuma replied causing the foreign Janins to pale. They have heard of the notorious Forest of Death before. Line break. For the first five minutes, Naruto tried to answer the question before giving up and summoning a few clones and taking out a pack of cards. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Ibiki asked when he spotted Naruto dealing the cards. I'm bored and not interested in the test at all so I decided to play poker with my clones. You want to join in? Naruto asked. Fine. I can't wait to see your face when I beat you. Ibiki said hitting one of the clones making it dispel before seating down. After one and a half hours of Ibiki losing, it was time for the tenth question. Before I give out the tenth question, you can decide if you want to take it or not, Ibiki said. Of course we will take it, shouted Kiba causing Ibiki to chuckle a little. I have not finished yet. If your answer is wrong, then you and your team will never be able to take the Chunin exams ever again," Ibiki said causing uproar. I know a guy who has taken the Chunin exams lots of time before so I call bullshit on that," Naruto stated. Well, the person has yet to meet me then," Ibiki replied. This caused 40 teams from the remaining 70 teams to leave. Sakura was about to raise her hand when Naruto spoke up. You know, I still call bullshit on that. The Hokage will never let you do something like that. Even if he somehow does, 
I can always steal his Icha Icha collection and threaten him to overturn that decision. Naruto said causing Ibiki to laugh outright. Kid, you must have some balls to threaten the Hokage like that. Ibiki said. After a while, it was clear that no more teams were going to forfeit so Ibiki continued. For those who have decided to stay, you pass. Ibiki stated. Told ya. That was total bullshit. The tenth question was the choice wasn't it Ibiki? Naruto questioned. You were right, so I was correct. You have the test figured out already, Ibiki said. What makes you think that? Naruto asked. The fact that not even ten minutes after the test started, you decided to play poker with your clones. Ibiki replied making Naruto smirk a little. Wait, so the tenth question was the choice we took but I don't see the point in that. I know that the cheating part is to test how good we are at gathering information. Tamari said. Simple, there will come the time where you will have to make a decision that could affect your village and team. Let's say that your teammates are in trouble but you have important documents that could possibly end the war. What would you do? Each decision you make will have a consequences so think carefully, Ibiki said before the shattering of glass could be heard. You are early yet again Anko, Ibiki said. You have become soft haven't you? There are so many teams left, Anko stated. Well, we have some interesting people in this batch especially the blonde guy. Ibiki said point to Naruto. When Anko saw Naruto, she grinned. How is it going, Foxy Kun? Anko asked knowing that it will piss Naruto off. I'm fine Habiheim. How about you? Naruto asked as payback. You guys can flirt later. They still don't know where to go for the second part of the exams, Ibiki said. Fine. The location for the second part of the exams will be at training ground 44. Your senseis should know where is it. If they don't then ask around. I'm sure you will be able to find it. Now scram. Oh before I forget, the exam starts at 8. Anko shouted before all the genins except for Naruto to leave. Once all the genins left, Naruto walked up to Anko. Anko, I forgot to tell you yesterday that I have found a way to get rid of the cursed seal for you and you guys might want to keep an eye on one Kabuto Yakushi. He has information that is classified and he smells of snake. This means that he might be working with Orochimaru, Naruto said. Thanks for the heads up. I will inform the Hokage immediately, Ibiki said before he shushined away to the Hokage's office. So, want to hang out? Naruto asked. Sure why not, let me go get Kuranai, Yugo and Hana as well. Where do you want to meet? Anko asked. How about the Dango store you always go to? Naruto suggested. Sure, meet you there in one hour's time, Anko said before leaving to find the girls. One hour later. Naruto was seating at the dango bar and ordering some food when the ladies appeared. 40 original and 10 seaweed dango. Naruto said to the chef who nodded his head before going to prepare. Hey Naruto, I never knew that you like dango that much, Hana said. Well, I kind of like it but ramen is still the best. Naruto replied before the chef came back with the order. Naruto then gave Kuranai the seaweed dango as he knew were her favorites. He then distributed the original flavored dango around the rest of the ladies keeping 10 for himself. Thanks Naruto. The ladies said at the same time causing Naruto to laugh a little. They settled for small talk, which eventually led to the first part of the Chunin exams. How did you find the first part of the Chunin exams? Kuranai asked. I figured out what Ibiki was trying to do within the first few minutes of the exams so I created some clones to play poker but Ibiki joined in. He lost every round, Naruto said. What? Ibiki is known for his skills at playing poker due to his poker face. How did you manage to win against him? Yugo asked. Simple. Each time he thinks he has a chance to win, he will always shuffle his card and his eyes muscle will twitch a little, Naruto replied. How do you notice this type of things? Hana asked this time. The shadow clone I used was a modified version that can communicate mentally. The clones would observe Ibiki while playing just in case I miss things like this. Once they spot anything unusual, they will tell me through the mental link. Naruto explained. Wow. Just imagine using that modified version of the shadow clone to scout ahead without the need to dispel. Anyway, when can we get rid of my curse mark? Anko asked. Well, I could do it now if you like. Naruto replied. 
Anko nodded her head before the both of them shushine to training ground 44. Anko this will only take a few minutes so bear with it for a while. Now please expose your shoulder. Naruto said and Anko complied. After drawing up the necessary seals, Naruto placed the paper on Anko's cursed mark before channeling chakra to his left hand. Juinjutsu. Cursed seal of heaven removal. Naruto shouted slamming his hand on the paper with the seals causing it to glow. After a while the cursed seal began to turn into ink and flowed into a scroll where Naruto sealed it up before destroying using a fire jutsu. He then bit down of Anko's neck giving her a new seal. During the process, Anko passed out due to the pain. When she woke up, Anko noticed that instead of the cursed seal, a new seal was in place. Naruto. What is this new seal? Anko asked curious. The cursed seal of heaven has a small part of Orochimaru's soul in it. When I removed the seal it made your soul very unstable so I had to give you one of my own Juinjutsu known as the Blessed Seal of Soul, which allows your own soul to stabilize. The design is based on the fact that you are quite fond of the snakes even though they are used by Orochimaru as well. Naruto replied. Thank you Naruto. I have been waiting for this day for so long. Anko exclaimed before kissing on the lips causing Naruto blush a little but he managed to get it under control. Sorry, I should not have done that. I guess I was too excited, Anko said sheepishly. Don't worry about it. Besides I don't mind being kissed by a pretty lady such as yourself. Naruto said causing Anko to blush because this was the first time someone called her pretty. Thanks, I believe that we have to get back to the rest otherwise they might think that something happened to us, Anko said. Naruto and Anko then shushined back to the dango bar. Sorry about that but Naruto managed to get rid of that cursed seal for me. Anko apologized to her friends. Really? Then what is the mark on your neck? Hana asked. Naruto then went on to explain what the seal is and what it does. By the end of the explanation, they became even more interested in the obscure art. After hanging out with the ladies for another two hours, Naruto decided to leave. Sorry ladies but I have to prepare for tomorrow so bye. Naruto shouted before he shushined away. I really have to come up with another shushin. I only use the poison shushin to get close to enemies. Naruto thought to himself as he entered his house. The next day at 8, everyone was there. Welcome to training ground 44 or better known as the forest of death. The second part of the exam is simple. You will be issued a scroll, which can be either a heaven or earth scroll. The objective is to take another scroll from other teams. If you have the heaven scroll, you will need the earth scroll and vice versa. Once you have it, head towards the center of forest but first you will have to sign this waiver, Anko said. What is this waiver for and what about food? Choji asked. The waiver is to say that Konoha will not be held responsible for any deaths in the exams. As for food, there are many animals and plants in there so you will not starve, Anko replied. Once everyone signed the waiver, each team was handed a scroll. Team 7 happened to get the heaven scroll. Who will be the one carrying it? Naruto asked. Simple, it should Sasuke kun since he is the best. Sakura shouted at once. No, Naruto should be the one holding the scroll because as much as I hate to say it but Naruto is more skilled than me. Sasuke said. Naruto then took the scroll and sealed it in his arms. This way, it will be impossible for other teams to take our scrolls. Naruto said before making his way to their assigned gates with Sasuke and Sakura following behind. The second exam starts now. Anko shouted before the gates opened and everyone rushed into the forest. Hope that Naruto would be alright. Anko thought to herself before going to find her friends. The end. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.